so uh, it, back in our, if we go back to uh, to the website, it actually doesn't matter which file you download, you'll get different value. I think I'm going to go for the n equals 200 file, so it's the one we opened earlier, association and correlation, n equals 200. Open it. And you can simply generate the p, the p value associated with the chi squared statistic. Um, if you want to do it manually, you know, you, I've shown you how to do it, and you can go and look up a table on the internet. There's plenty of the chi squared tables on the internet. But equally, the, the rapid way of doing this is you get your data file open. Uh, we go to analyze descriptive statistics, cross tabs, that's a new one for us. We go to cross tabs, and then it tells, asks us, well, which variables would you like to put in the rows and the columns? And I'm going to put the trooper type in the rows, as I did in the contingency table that we had earlier in the, in the slides. And I'm going to put uh, job satisfaction in the columns, if I can. Yep. Now, there's a little button there that says statistics, and you can press on the statistics button. And you'll see all sorts of things that you can do with that data. The one that we want to look at at the moment is chi-square. You'll find, actually, I, I, I insist on calling it chi-squared with a D on the end because missing the D off irritates me. It just seems incorrect. But social scientists often drop the D. Uh, SPSS is a social sciences piece of software, and hence they've gone with that convention. But it seems silly to me. Squared, chi is squared. That's what the raised to the power of two means. Anyway, uh, that, so if you press, you've got that, then you tick chi square, duh, and press continue, and then you can just press OK. Just press OK on that box, and it will chuck out a load of stuff at you. What it does give you is your contingency table. So if you've recorded your data as I've got it recorded in the file, you'll see that um, you can produce a contingency table. Unfortunately, Sav is not here to correct me, uh, or maybe fortunately. I, I'm not sure how you get the expected values out from SPSS. I don't even know if you can, which I think is a real shame, because it doesn't seem that you get all of the information that you might want to use to assess uh, your data. So there must be a way of doing it. But for the moment, we'll just look at the result of the chi squared. Yes, if you find a way, do let me know. Uh, I, I didn't Google it, and if you Google it, you'll probably get the answer. So the chi squared test here is telling me that for that sample, n equals 200, you want the Pearson chi square significant very, very small value. P equals much less than 0 0.05. So I'm rejecting the null hypothesis that these data sets are the same. Therefore, I'm going to, this data is suggestive to me that the uh, job satisfaction is associated with your, with your era of service, era of service being Republic or Imperial. So now I've discovered that stormtroopers are, have a different level of satisfaction to clones. What we can do, and the re this is the reason that you, the expected and the relative uh, square difference tables can be quite useful, is I can interpret this a bit further. So I've got a chi-square value that allows me to reject the null hypothesis. What those tables allow me to do
you say, well, I can see the biggest differences are, hang on, I can see that the biggest differences are here around very satisfied, and I've got other big differences around, um, sorry, very dissatisfied, and I've got other big differences around satisfied and very, dis very satisfied. And if we look back, if I go back a slide, I can see here, I look, okay, well, my expected amongst um, Republic clone troopers, I would expect to get something like 42 respondents very dissatisfied. However, I got 25 respondents very dissatisfied. So that's telling me that Republic clone troopers aren't as dissatisfied as Republic as Imperial stormtroopers who responded with 75 versus an expected response for very dissatisfied at 58. So there's more responding there as very dissatisfied as, than I might expect. And if I look at the other end of the scale, Republic clone troopers. They re I got 22 responses as very satisfied. I would expect, under the null hypothesis, to get only nine respondents as very satisfied. So by comparing these tables and looking at the um, relative square differences, I'm starting not only to say I can reject the null hypothesis, but I can also make uh, some early statements regarding who is more or less satisfied. And I'm, I'm starting to see that Republic clone troopers appear to be, or have a tendency to be more satisfied in their jobs than Imperial stormtroopers. And that's why it's a little bit of a shame that SPSS doesn't seem to spit this data out. I'm sure there's a checkbox to get, to get it. Um, and if I find it, I will let you know. And that's what we looked at in SPSS. So, yep, I saw very small p-values. So it's a very significant result. And these were just simply my observed values. And indeed, so I've just said in my results that stormtroopers tended towards lower job satisfaction and clone troopers tended towards greater job satisfaction. So there appears to be a difference 